be recording this um, just for reference of it later. Thank you. All right. So as I said, we've got a pretty full schedule. I'd like to get started. Um, I am going to go over a brief recap of our regional crash data inventory. For those of you who joined us in May, um, this is a little bit different as we had had some content um, joined from that and conversations since then, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Um, following that, I am going to address the draft needs assessments. And both the inventory and needs assessment were sent out um, to those with this calendar invites um, last week. So I hope that everyone had a chance to take a look at them, at least skim them, skim them over. Um, thank you to those who have had a chance to look at it and provide a few comments already. Really appreciate that. After the overview of the draft needs assessments, we are going to go into a interactive workshop. Um, and with the help of some of my colleagues, we're going to address each group will be split up into little, some groups and each group will have a handful of these identified needs um, and we'll be discussing those. Following that, we'll have a brief update from our partners at the State Traffic Records Advisory Committee on some of the work that they are doing, including some of the management of programs such as the Crash Data Consortium Grant. And we'll conclude with a couple final notes and steps um, next steps for the group going forward. Briefly, just to show where we're at in this timeline. So as many of you know, have you been here from the beginning, we did have our kickoff of this group back in November of 2022. Following that, we had several months of um, surveys, interviews, conversations, and other engagements um, to inform our crash data inventory, a brief summary of that, which again, we shared out in November in May. And following that, based on the results from this inventory and these conversations, um, Dr. Cox staff have been working on really identifying needs and challenges that um, the region is facing as it comes to um, crash data and other these traffic records, and which have informed our draft needs assessment, which we'll be sharing out today. And that's where we are today um, with this meeting. And as we go into the next fiscal year, um, FY24 on October 1st, we'll be in a phase where we're really taking the needs identified, looking to develop and implement solutions to some of these challenges, have a final large meeting of this group um, at that point, and we'll be publishing a final report um, detailing everything we've learned and the steps we've made towards these goals. So without further ado, I'm going to move into our recap of the inventory. The inventory really covered four main topics. First and foremost, um, looking into the data sources that stakeholders of the consortium are using. Um, we then we asked many of our stakeholders about the types of analysis and their goals that they're looking to use crash data for. Uh, we asked and learned a lot about challenge issues and challenges that users are facing as users and collectors are facing as it comes to this. And we were tasked with any finding any other um, relevant information to this kind of planning process. As it comes to the data sources, I, I really broke it down into some of the main data and additional data that stakeholders told us that they were using. Um, importantly, what we heard is that there's almost every stakeholder that we talked to um, is using multiple sources of data, um, whether that is um, whether they're a municipal government act, which has access to some of the records from their police departments, and they may also use um, the yearly data from CDOT or from Dr. Cog, or they have access to software from a vendor or if they or from their county. Um, but many also, in some ways, try to use or are interested in using data that may be gathered from their not non non law enforcement emergency response like fire districts or departments emergency medical services. Um, some, there's, there's some interest in getting some more data and connecting more data from um, down, downstream in, in the process from toxicology medical examiners, or even from hospital emergency departments. Most of the data, or practically all the data coming from in the main data sources is ultimately being sourced from law enforcement sources. Um, and importantly, that's a, a large emphasis of kind of what um, we've, we've heard from our stakeholders. When it comes to analysis, a lot of the goals that we've heard really fit under this kind of 3E framework of engineering, um, education, and enforcement. Um, many stakeholders are really looking to really make changes to the built environment through engineering and planning. Um, some are looking at what the trends and what they found in crash data 
to form educational campaigns on safety devices such as um, seat belts, car seats, and um, helmets for motorcycle users, for example, um, or to demonstrate where to drivers and other users, road users, what are dangerous or um, areas to be careful in. And also to, um, the enforcement, um, law enforcement uses this to help direct patrols, not only to be able to respond to serious crashes when they occur, but also to have a presence on roadways as a deterring effect. Really first and foremost, we've heard that a safety review for and screening for correctable patterns is a large role of the analysis work done by this group. Um, and some of these reviews can address certain um, specific concerns like um, an intersection, like a crash, an intersection or roadway, or they could be ongoing where maybe there's a quarterly report being done or monthly meetings between law enforcement and engineers to, sh to share data back and forth. Or as part of other roadway, roadway improvement projects, oftentimes um, safety analyses are, are part of these larger projects. Our stakeholders have told us that they're looking to understand First and foremost, really the crash locations, where crashes are occurring. Um, some are really just looking at what's their top intersection, what's their top roadway stretch. Some are have, have more sophisticated or detailed analyses really looking into where are crashes happening more frequently than might be expected based on volume or the characteristics of roadways. A lot of stakeholders are interested in behavioral and contributing factors to crashes, such as um, distracted driving, impairments, speeding, the movements of the traffic units in the crashes, and the, the type of crash, and an emphasis on understanding who are the, the road users, um, and an emphasis on vulnerable road users, such as um, bicyclists, pedestrians, and motorcyclists, and really looking at developing specific countermeasures to mitigate crashes because there's no one on one one size fits all approach to a lot of these circumstances. We've heard there's a great desire to integrate data from other sources to the to supplement the records captured by um, law enforcement, um, such as toxicology or citation data from police. There's a desire for more of a single standardized um, geolocated data source that all stakeholders would have access to and be able to reference as almost sort of an authoritative data set. There's an increase in, there's an interest in an increased use of linear referencing systems, which we'll talk about a little bit later on what Dr. Kag is doing about this. But in general, for those unfamiliar, it's a geospatial information systems tool that uses a roadway centerline network and attributes along these roadways. It's very simple, not the best explanation of it, but a way to to really use a, a network approach and layering information based off of where things are events are occurring on this network instead of necessarily instead of points on a map like the xy coordinates um, and then final desire i think a large reason why we're all here is really looking to learn and collaborate with um, peers in this workspace um, last note on analysis two things that came up in a lot of conversations that were deemed as valuable by by many folks were the narrative and diagram from um, law enforcement crash reports. Narrative being the opportunity that officers and troopers have to um, put down a kind of a mechanicalistic explanation of what happens in a, in a crash that can give a little more context than just the, the fields of the reports and a diagram, which there's certain requirements, different agencies for when a diagram is required, but ways to physically show um, what happened um, in, in a crash that can be used analysis later. Some of the issues and challenges we heard um, really came down to location accuracy and availability. Um, many stakeholders don't have access to geolocated data, and sometimes even when they do, the quality of it is a bit suspect. And so there's a real interest in getting improving the quality and availability of that. The timeliness of the data, making sure that stakeholders are able to get this data quickly, um, especially as it's coming through the, the state process, which involves multiple agencies and a lot of manual work. Um, improving the consistency of crash reports, um, being the accuracy um, and the consistency and lack of errors in reports, especially as it comes to um, street name locations and the events of what happened and, uh, and underreporting of certain aspects of a report. The accessibility of the data, we've heard at least earlier in the process that some folks were, again, unsure of where data, where to get data, what's available. 
Um, and of course, given different capabilities, different organizations, um, some users are more adept at using data and different tools than others. And so we kind of want to help kind of level, so if there's an interest in leveling that playing field. Uh, we've heard of as discrepancies between data sets um, from local government records to what um, the state the state has, as well as challenges with integrating crash records with other other information. Um, first and foremost, being from not having unique identifiers between different um, law enforcement agencies until it gets to um, the states and later on in the process, and then also even if we had unique identifiers that were totally unique for each crash. In a lot, for a lot of the additional data and, and associated data folks are interested in, there's not a real direct way to connect a lot of this data. Last, before we move on to the needs assessment, I just wanna touch on some really important relevant information that we heard from certain stakeholders. Um, really the, the relationship between um, law enforcement who are capturing this data and using it um, and the other data users, including like planners, engineers, et cetera, um, it's really important that that, they, that this relationship exists. And I think that this can be strengthened. Um, I've heard that the relationships between different data users and law enforcement can vary from one municipality saying their relationship was phenomenal. They're able to get information really quickly. They can just go down the hall um, or send a request to their, their PD and have a close relationship to others saying that their PD doesn't really wanna give up the data. They don't have it. If they do, or if they are able to get data, it might take weeks or months to get um, a simple request. And I think a part of, part of this, what we've heard is that it's important that both law enforcement and data users really understand each other and what the data is used for. Um, I've, I've heard that there's some frustration um, that the information seems more, more along the lines of what's important for insurance and for these types of purposes. And while that's true, that is captured, the, the data is really used um, on the end by many folks who have an interest in traffic safety. And so ensuring that everyone is on the same page about why the many fields that are being asked for um, need to be completed um, is important. And then one final note on the relationship is I did want to note that almost all of the non-law enforcement folks I talked to um, Universally recognize the the challenge faced by law enforcement when they're responding to crashes. So, just want to make sure that that's that's out there. Last note on on this relevant information. Um, speaking with law enforcement, I've heard that many agencies are really facing challenges with staffing and training. A lot of agencies are the rate of attrition of officers or troopers leaving versus whether that's for retirement, going to a different agency, or um, leaving the profession for something else, or even just an internal promotion, leaves a lot of these agencies lacking staff and some teams that may be operating, should, that should be oper some traffic units, which may should be operating with up to six people are currently running at two, two to three. And so there's just a strain there. And as it comes to training, uh, I've heard that many agencies that really even struggle to reach, meet the required training from the states, um, the, the mandatory retirement requirements. Um, so being cognizant of the demands that we may be asking or to, or to as we work to work together on this. And then finally, I've seen firsthand the um, some of the um, and heard some of the frustration that some officers and troopers may have with the different technology that they they have. So they're really limited by what current, they currently have access to to work with system reports. And some of these programs are not the most user-friendly and they may be sort of kind of locked into certain arrangements for the time being um, as it relates to the different records management systems and other technology they have. So with that, that was, again, just a brief overview, uh, a recap of the inventory that we shared previously. Um, with that, that really helped to helped our staff to develop what we're, what we're calling our draft needs assessment. And I'm saying draft with all this because we are going to be doing a workshop with you all and really wanting your feedback to make sure that what we've come up with is really resonating. It's really hitting the mark. Um, we're not missing anything major and that that we really just, just feel like this is representative of what you all believe because this is work that's going to help guide this this document is work that's going to help guide um, this project. 
And as I just stated, you know, this needs assessment really meant to help guide our activities and importantly, the priorities of um, this project. Uh, we've taken the, we've created a number of needs and taken them and um, have broken them down into seven categories, um, largely around the, the issues and challenges, but also with some other uh, factors. And first and foremost, that is the geospatial data elements of the crash data. Second, the timeliness of the data. Third, the data quality. So that's the um, accuracy, the consistency. Fourth, we've been looking at the uh, this consortium capacity. And fifth, we'll be looking at the accessibility of data, making sure that it's useful by all people in our group. Fine. Sixth, looking at um, kind of educational components of how we can work together with this. And finally, looking at integration. Before I get into the needs, I just want to lay out a quick example of what we're going to look, be looking at and how to read it. So each one is going to have in the first column just a unique identifier so we can reference those and talk about them. Um, second, we're going to be they, on this screen, we have um, what the need would be, something listed out there. Third, uh, the priority that um, Dr. Cook's staff has assigned to this based on what we've heard and what we kind of feel that people are are looking for. And so, but again, this is a draft. So we want to hear from you. If you think that if we put something as a medium and the group thinks it should be high or low, that's why we're doing this today. And then third, or, or finally, I should say, um, I have a column here it's called resources. And this is a spot where I've listed out some potentially specific um, consortium partners or organizations um, or funding sources that might be might have a disproportionate effect on this this role. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is the only organization that should be working on this or it's the only funding opportunity, um, but really that they just might just have an outsized role in it. So often you might see in this column, Dr. Cog, CDOT, um, law enforcement. Again, this does not mean that it's just for these three types of organizations to work on. Um, I, I feel that our um, planners and engineers, JS professionals, uh, uh, public health folks in this room um, really have a lot to bring to this, especially as it may come to making influences on these other organizations or onto um, electeds who might have an, an, a more an, a more influence on directing certain roles. And so if, even if you don't see planner or engineer listed somewhere, um, you're not off the hook there. So, um, and finally on this page, before we move on, you may see 405C listed a few times. And 405C is a traffic records improvement grant that comes through the National Highway um, Transportation Safety Administration, NHTSA. Um, it's actually the same grants under which this consortium is currently being the organization of the consortium is being funded and so it may be at least for projects that continue past this next fiscal year a potential source of funding um, for records that improve it and again we would need to apply for that if this is the route that people want to go down but just in case you see this a few times and are unfamiliar with it i wanted to elucidate, elucidate it Right, starting with the first few needs here, um, really starting with geospatial and timeliness, um, as these are, are some of the, the some of the things we heard most often and most specifically from stakeholders. Um, are people are really interested in increasing the number of records that have um, latitude and longitude um, in the first place coming from law enforcement. Um, what we have, and so many agencies don't necessarily collect the XY coordinates when they're on in the field. Um, a lot of times we've heard that they're collecting the, interse the intersection and an offset of where it happened. For example, if it happens at first and main in whatever town that is, and they might put 50 feet east of that. And that's how it's laid out in the crash manual, uh, the crash manual to fill it out. That's one of the options to do it. Um, X, uh, latitude and longitude is another option, but it's not required um, by the documents and it's not required by all agencies. So this kind of really ties into G2 as well, where um, we want to increase the number of records in the state data um, that's used by a lot of stakeholders with that latitude and longitude. As, right, as of right now, the state 
really they, they do a good job on geolocating the XY coordinates on crashes that occur on system, like the interstates, other highways um, in the state, as well as serious and um, serious injury and fatal crashes um, that are off system. But this still leaves tens of thousands of records that um, don't get geocoded. So some of these needs may kind of roll into each other as they're addressed. Um, so if we can get more of these records with, ge with, uh, with accurate locations in the first place, that can feed into, that can help this, the quality of the data downstream. Um, and just for example, in the Dr. Cog region, um, the most recent data we got from CDOT was around 60,000 records and nearly 25,000, so roughly 42%, um, did not have coordinates. And many of those are property damage only crashes, but they're still important to be able to have in our system and so to learn from as in the areas where even relatively concerned minor crashes um, we would want to understand where they're happening and how to work on that, work towards mitigating that. Um, the third point on geospatial looking at the accuracy. Um, yeah, I really wanted to kind of improve the geospatial accuracy of records in these different data sets. Um, even though they go through a lot of QC and there's a lot of people working really hard on these, there's a lot, a lot that can go, goes into geocoding. And so just trying to identify where improvements can be made to make sure that we have the best, most accurate information for users. Um, for neat timeliness, I really just have one um, need that was highlighted by um, stakeholders, and that's to improve the, the timeliness, the release of that data um, coming from CDOT. Um, if you've joined us for previous meetings, um, you may have seen that We've had representatives from Department of Revenue and um, Department of Transportation go through their process for the data, and it, it can take a long time to get through. Um, and so really working with these important partners to help move, help move along um, as um, data users in the, in the region are have an appetite to get that sooner um, to get to their projects and to their electeds and to move some of their projects along. Um, Next category we want to address is the data quality. Um, first and foremost, really just improving the data quality of all the fields in the report, um, largely with this relating to location, um, the, the movement, the users. Um, I've heard examples from local governments in where the traffic unit, the, the, the involved in the, the individual, one of the individuals involved in a crash in number of crashes reported as pedestrians, but under further analysis, they under through, through the narrative and other information realized that really they were um, bicyclists. So really trying to work to make sure that these things, which um, can hopefully be be fixed earlier on in the process, can be caught and taken care of. We want to look work on addressing the underreporting of data, um, including bike and ped. Um, we've heard from many stakeholders that. Some of the, many of these crashes are not even are not reported, um, and if they are, they may not reported in completely. And impairment being suspected is uh, a challenge that we have encountered um, from we heard from many stakeholders. Um, to, one note here before I move on to the next is you may see this resource of the Crash Manual Task Force. This is a group that um, we're we're going to hear a little bit more about um, later on in this, but I think they're they're a really important resource um, that is working to help to, while we can't necessarily change the crash form right now, it was just updated in 2019. Um, and everyone is finally um, on the right form now and submitting the data through that right form now, um, to my knowledge. That, that organization, that group is working to make the instructions easier, make the reference easier, um, just make it so that those who are use, using the report um, have a better resource to, to complete it. So you see them on a couple of these as well. Um, they may have a role in improving and standardizing the data collection process. And um, here I have um, FHWA. Um, we've heard that there's been past trainings that they've done where they've done kind of like a engineer, law enforcement 101, or speak how to speak each other's language. So something like that is kind of the idea. Um, improving the access to crash diagrams is our next need as there's kind of an interesting thing with the diagrams wherein since it's not a text field or a string, any sort of field like that, it's not transmitted through like a, ta a table, like a tabular data, like the rest of the information. So it's 
it's just not easy to kind of get that and go through the process like some of the other information. So a lot of times what I understand is that, and I've heard is that that stays at the local agency or at the state. And so being able to maybe make that more available to those who want access to it to understand the context plan crashes. And then last on this quality point, um, I know it says explore funding opportunities um, as part of it, but others other, also just the, just explore different systems. I'm seeing if there are other, maybe some sort of shared records management system or uh, process that law enforcement could use. And if it is going to cost a significant amount of, of money, um, we wanted to, again, explore these funding opportunities so as to try to avoid um, any sort of un unfunded mandate to these solutions. Oh, I'm sorry. Next, we have uh, accessibility. Um, so again, making sure that users who want to use data have access to it and um, the right tools to, to work with it. Um, so really looking to improve the data sharing collaboration, um, facilitating more data sharing between agencies, um, looking at maybe the creation and or development of an even more standardized um, geolocated data source that could either be live at the state, at CDOT, or an, another, or as suggested by some stakeholders. Um, and some have even suggested that CDOT should potentially be the one, be, be the entity responsible for geocoding records, like some several other states or many other states in our country. Um, we're interested in kind of greater transparency around the processing, uh, how QC is being done, what issues are being found and addressed. Um, we have had a really great relationship with at Dr. Cog with CDOT and um, sharing with them what we're finding in the data and offering to to test certain things. And so we're hoping to continue that and make sure that that sort of valuable information is available for everyone who's interested. Um, wanting to improve analysis for the region um, through linear referencing, as mentioned before, incorporating different different metrics, including things such as analysis of volumes. Um, using looking at the roadway characteristics of certain areas um, and factors such as um, level of service of safety, which is a analytical tool um, that's discussed deeply in the Highway Safety Manual. The, um, looking to reconcile these differences between data sets. Again, some local governments are showing that they have more, more crashes and some even more fatal and serious crashes than um, the state. Um, and so I think the fatals are mostly the same, but just the number of crashes are, are not lining up in some areas. Um, and so wanted, if we can reconcile that, that would be great. And then finally, either developing um, in-house or in collaboration with others, um, some better um, or require or just purchasing um, regional processing and mapping tools, things that can be made available to everyone in the region. Um, and so, and also really just looking to see what's currently being done, deep dive, what people want, and maybe just improving or standardizing the, the, the definitions of how to calculate certain um, metrics between the region and other agencies and organizations. We're almost done, I promise. <laughs> so as we get on to um, capacity, this is our fifth metric, our fifth um, category. We'd really be interested in Building out more partnerships, uh, I think we've had a, a lot of success in speaking with uh, folks. And so, but one one organization that I'd like to, that I'm really focused on right now is um, additional law enforcement, um, because as you've seen, I think that they're going to be a, a, our partnership with law enforcement is going to be really valuable for moving many of these goals forward. Um, and we're going to want to look into some more ways to we're researching some successful consortium or collaboration structures and funding um, to continue and sustain this group beyond the the um, the dates we currently have and the funding we currently have through the 405c grants and this is our last slide before we go on to the workshop um, so this two categories on this about education integration uh, we've heard um, an interest from stakeholders in really learning and again, learning from others, seeing what is being done, best practices are being done, um, especially from smaller agencies or jurisdictions who don't have a hundred person, um, hundred planners and engineers. And so we want to be able to 
learn from each other, maybe come up with some policies that can be shared across the, the region or, for, or recommended, and as, as well as if there are certain things that are coming up in the reports that are coming up across the region, being able to provide training and share those out with those who are creating those reports to, to make more consistency. And then finally, with integration, we are looking to, to join at least the regional crash data and from, from the Dr. Card region to the state's um, all roads network of linear reference data, the Arnold. Um, again, we've got a really great relationship with CDOT and we've been working closely with them to coordinate on this. I'm really excited about this and then my colleague Jenny Wallace will join, will speak about this a little bit later, um, but we are going to be working on that. And then we're looking, also looking at exploring um, some of this, some of this, yeah, some of this non-police, um, some of this um, non-law enforcement, um, additional associated crash data, seeing how they can integrate into these data sources to provide more context on crashes, provide more understanding of what's happening, or if there's regional trends that are that um, we need to know about, and looking and related to this, exploring and integrating some of this data that's some of which comes up comes out after the crash is reported um, to to run the revenue, but but a amended report is not filled out, and so some data may be retained by law enforcement and their records and local governments might have access to that but some of that is not getting then into the state data and so working to try to figure out ways to make sure that that flow data flow is consistent and we're, all the correct information is getting to where it ought to get so that um, users can can use the data to make informed decisions And that was a lot of me talking, so I'm really glad that we're moving on to um, our needs workshop. So with this, we are going to divide everyone into six breakout rooms. And um, for each one of the rooms, one of my colleagues will be helping to, will be moderating that session. Um, we're gonna give each group three to four of these needs to discuss and address. Again, we're interested in how does it resonate with you? How does the prioritization that we've assigned to it um, resonate? And if there's anything that your group feels is missing from, from the list that I just went through, um, we wanna hear about that. Um, each of the staff, they, they will have a list of the other needs. So if there's a need to, if, once you're through with the three to four assigned, and if you want to reference one or more of the others or clar any clarifications, um, that is available to them as well. We will not be returning to the main groups. We will be returning to this after the breakouts, but we're not going to be doing uh, group by group report outs. So the moderators will be taking notes and they will be listening. Um, but really, we want just just the ideation and sharing between the between all of you. Um, and so we think it's more valuable just to, to have the conversation and take the notes than to have the report out at the end, as we do have some more um, content following that. So if you would just give me a moment, I'm going to go ahead and get these rooms set up and we will get started. If you are joined through the Zoom web browser or, or from the website, uh, we thought it might take a minute or two to connect. So please just be, be patient. It seems to go quicker through the application. Um, so we're gonna get this set up and um, move you into the rooms and we're gonna give it about um, 30, 30 minutes. So just hang tight and we'll get you in. Thank you.
All right, just one more moment. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for, uh, for participating. I was bouncing around the rooms, really interesting conversations. I'm sorry if it was a little abrupt. I, I was hoping we could have a little bit longer countdown, but mm -hmm. the app gave us a 60 second and not options to, I, I must have misread it before. So, but the conversations were all really interesting from what I heard. Um, again, thank you all for joining for that. Um, just have a couple of things to, to cover before we conclude here. Um, I want to uh, give the floor to uh, Matt Brown, um, who's going to give us an update on the uh, um, from the State Traffic Records Advisory Committee. Um, Matt, are you able to share your screen? Perfect. Okay. okay. Or Celeste. Uh, okay. Great. Yep. yep. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Eric. Appreciate it. Um, I guess. Uh, good morning, everyone. I, I know a lot of you uh, are, are already familiar with the the STRAC. I see a lot of faces and names that I recognize, but uh, I thought I would give everyone a quick introduction, um, talk about how you could participate in our group if you're interested, and then give you an overview of a couple of projects that we're currently working on that I think uh, over time is gonna change, you know, maybe the quality of the data that you receive and, and uh, how you receive it. So first off, the STRAC is, um, is a state traffic records advisory committee, and it consists of seven voting members that are all state agencies. Uh, that includes CSP, CDOT, Department of Revenue, CDPHE, Office of Information Technology, Judicial Branch, and the Department of Human Services. I want to just quickly recognize a couple of people. So we do have the chair of STRAC here, David Swenka with CDOT, co-chair um, Scott Spinks with the Department of Revenue, and um, I also saw Robert Gabella, who is our representative from CDPHE uh, in the conference today. 
can go to the next slide, Celeste. So the primary goal of this track is to improve the timeliness, accuracy, completeness, uniformity, and accessibility of traffic-related data needed to identify priorities for national, state, and local highway and traffic safety programs. And this track also oversees the 405C program, so the solicitation, application, review, approval, and recommendation to NHTSA for Colorado's um, 405C grant projects. And Eric touched on those. Those are the grants um, issued by NHTSA for the purpose of improving um, traffic records in the state of Colorado. Uh, next slide. So if you would like to participate, and we welcome participation from anyone interested. Um, we do have two more meetings calendared for this year. Uh, one, in, uh, they're typically the third Thursday, um, beginning at 9 a.m. They go from 9 to 12, typically. The first hour is kind of more about kind of routine business, and um, then typically we move into a more strategic planning um, uh, meeting at about 10 o'clock. So we currently meet virtually, although we're talking about potentially doing a hybrid meeting next year. And please feel free to reach out to me or any of those other STRAC members that I mentioned earlier. If you'd like to get added to our distribution list, then um, uh, we can make sure that you're informed about our meetings. Uh, next slide, please. So I wanted to talk about three, uh, three, um, sorry. Um, three um, current initiatives that we have going on with the STRAC. And again, I think these have the potential to, to fundamentally change some things about how we're using crash data and, and other types of data in Colorado. So the first is the Investigating Officers Crash Reporting Manual. These are all task force groups. So the STRAC has identified um, a small working group for each of these. Um, and we're currently working on different initiatives. Um, the, the fatal blotter application, I know that that was mentioned uh, in my small group that um, Boulder County receives those early notifications on fatals. And we've got a group looking at that. And then we're also looking at a multi-agency group on e-citations. I'd like to talk about each of those briefly for just a minute. Uh, next slide, please. So the crash manual um, is a um, is, is really kind of our first opportunity to look back on the DR3447 that's been you know put into practice and is now being used. And we're we're starting to see things with the data and and sort of marrying those up with how how um, you know, those data items are presented in the manual um, to really try and identify where might we make some edits to the manual um, to, to try and improve, I guess, what I would say that the quality of that data at the point of collection. This, this particular task force has morphed into a lot of different um, things. I mean, it, it's, it's like an onion. We just keep peeling layers. There's, there's a lot to this group. Um, we did a user survey. Um, and received over 80 responses from law enforcement and, and data analysts about challenges that they have, um, where they see the need for additional clarity in the manual or in, in uh, learning about their record management systems and what kind of training they receive and on what frequency. And, and so, um, you know, we've really been able to take that information and leverage it and look at things like what sort of training might we want to go ahead and pursue for these uh folks and, and what kinds of clarifications to the manual might yield us some better um, some better results. So uh, we're also doing a subgroup from this, um, this particular task force that ha happens to be meeting tomorrow to start looking at um, how and uh, when to report officers' opinion of, of impairment. Um, so that's, that's gonna be, I'm sure, a really interesting topic that we're gonna be tackling here. Um, we're also looking at long-term um, opportunities through this group. One is, does it make sense to calendar some thoughts on changing the DR3447? We know that that was a heavy lift to get in place, but, you know, potentially it might be something we want to revisit. Um, and then the, the record management systems, you know, we've talked a little bit about that again in our subgroup, but there's so many of them and they're all different and they have different validation and it causes some inconsistencies. Um, further down the line. So that would be another area that we'd like to tackle. And so benefits from this group, um, improving the consistency of data, improving the data for crashes at the point of collection, and, and really just a great opportunity for us to continue to have dialogue between our data analysts and our law enforcement. Um, next slide, please. 
so the fatal blotter, this, for those who may not be aware, this is an early notification system that's in place for crashes that typically involve uh, fatalities or serious bodily injuries or, or for whatever reason, a high profile crash. You know, if you think about involving a school bus or something like that. Um, typically, these kinds of crashes take a long time to investigate. And um, several years ago, Colorado put into place the early notification process. So this is a system where the investigating officer puts together a summary of the crash with some high level details and that information gets distributed to traffic engineers and, and others in the area. Um, um, yeah, uh, so I wanted to um, just say that we're working on um, doing an online application for this and uh, to, to try and um, make it, make it uh, simpler to, to uh, enter and transmit the data. Um, and so that's uh, that's an I'm going for right now. You can go ahead to the next slide, please. E Citations is a new initiative that involves another multi-jurisdictional group, and this one is is a really broad group of DOR, CSP, Colorado Judicial Branch, and it's it's looking at how to transmit citations electronically. Um, so from the law enforcement officer. The, the citation would get transmitted directly to the DOR electronically if it's such a penalty assessment or to judicial if it's summons. And then at the end of the process, once the adjudication has occurred, it could go directly from judicial back to DOR. Um, you know, benefits of this are that really improve timeliness to get this data back and forth. Um, you know, if you think about bad actors out there that might have lots of outstanding um, uh, citations out there. This is a process to help identify those folks and get get that information out to law enforcement. So, um, so anyway, that's just a quick overview of of uh, the STRAC and some of the activities that we're currently working on. Again, I encourage anyone who's interested to participate in in uh, in the STRAC and feel free to reach out. Uh, Eric, I'll turn it back over to you. Right, great. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, so we just have a few minutes left, and but we're almost done. I promise. Um, let me share my my screen um, one more time here. Like, um, right. So for final notes. Um, as I stated earlier, we did share out the draft draft documents for the inventory and needs assessment. Um, they go into much more much greater detail than um, what I was able to cover today. And so I know they're long documents, but the needs assessment is really only three pages um, after the cover page. So if everyone can at least take a look at that and um, provide comments, I'm going to drop in the chat here um, additional links on how to access that as well as my email. Um, if you have any trouble accessing those documents, please just reach out to me directly and I'll make sure that you can, can get onto that. Um, there's a couple ways that you can um, provide feedback. The best way is just in that Google Drive draft documents, just put your comments straight onto the, the page with the text. Um, you can email them to me or if you'd like to speak further on this um, through a Zoom or Teams or, or some meetup somewhere, um, please reach out to me and we can set that up. We would like to get the comments by October 13th, which is about two weeks from today. Um, so again, if you have, if you need help um, getting access to the documents, just let me know. And especially with and the, the um, and if there's any, anything that's from your organization that doesn't seem right or um, or is missing, uh, that's a this is a good opportunity to to fill that in. So thank you so much for that. Just as far as the the next steps here, um, we are yeah, going to be finalizing this inventory and needs assessment with the feedback we've got today and what we will we'll get from you all over the next couple of weeks. Um, we are planning on, this is still to be determined um, how this is going to work out, but we're talking about trying to do some sort of informal November gathering um, in person somewhere in the in the region 
um, just really, we started this project off last year. Um, we had a lot of, I think we've had a great success, but it's all been virtual at this point, except for the, the few folks that may have, I may have met at maybe the Colorado Traffic Safety Summit or um, maybe another meeting at CDOT or, or, or beyond. So we want to gather, gather people who are available and interested. Um, we'll be sending out more information about that soon. Um, we will be looking into essay to talking about that that integration of a linear referencing system. And um, Jenny, are you able to speak on that for uh, a minute or two? Yeah, I'll just I'll just do a quick minute on this. But um, first, I just wanted to say thank you to my group. Um, didn't get a chance to thank you all, but um, it was a great conversation. So uh, Dr. Cog is working on um, integrating a linear referencing system, the CDOT Arnold data. Um, into our data processing. And um, we're also working with CDOT to get up to speed on the roads and highways extension for Esri um, so that we can do that and really start um, bringing these pieces of roadway characteristics into, um, into the crash data um, for our regional product. So there will be more to that on, um, on a later date once we get a little bit further along, but just wanted to let you know that that is happening. Thanks. Great, thanks Jenny. And then finally, um, we are looking at exploring different ways this group can work together. Um, as noted, one of the needs was that consortium capacity. And so what that looks like, um, while we're maybe look, looking at maybe doing some sort of a working group or other, other structures that perhaps meet more often for shorter than an hour and a half every time. Um, and so... Keep an eye out for that. If you have any ideas or want to be involved in that, please let me know. Um, but we'll be kind of soliciting some, some. We'll be we'll talking about that on our side here and with all of you, and hopefully get that going soon. Because we really, as I think I made this clear earlier, I hope that we can't do this without you. Um, you know, we're we're really honored to be able to kind of be the, the lead of this project. But really, the the changes that we're going to get in the region is going to come from. Uh, the collaboration between all of us in this room and our partners. So we, we were going to get that going. Um, and with that, I'd just like to thank you all. Um, my email is here as well as Jenny's who just spoke. And I want to thank you all for participating. Uh, I want to thank Matt for speaking about um, what's going on at STRAC and my colleagues for helping facilitate the, the breakout sessions. Really appreciate your help with that. Um, and I'll stick around for a few more minutes. We've got one minute left before the meeting ends technically, but if anyone has any questions or would like to just address anything, um, I will be here. Thank you all. Hi, Eric. I, this is the, here. I, I got a quick question for you. Sure. Uh, sorry, I came in late. Uh, there were a workshop uh, done uh, last year and, you know, roadway data improvement program. Mm -hmm. There were recommendations from that. And Dr. Cog was uh, in that workshop. Are you going to uh, include uh, any of the uh, implementing any of the recommendations from that uh, workshop? That was done by Iowa State University. You right, yeah, Dr. Smadi. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, I I do have a copy of that report. Um, Dave Swinko was gracious to give me a copy of that. Um, and I've used it, I've referenced it definitely looking at, while, while creating the, the inventory. Um, I, off the top of my head, I don't have the, I don't have it on me right now. Um, but yeah, we, we have that in our position. We're working, looking at that for sure. Excellent. Yeah. There were recommendations that could go a long way, you know. So just I want to mention that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, how do I stop screen? All right. Um, well, I think that unless there's any other questions, well, I'll let you all get back to your mornings. Again, thank you all so much. And we will just, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much.